name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How big is God's love for you? How expansive is it? That's the question that we ponder a little bit, at least tonight, as we talk about God's provision for his people and indeed for the whole world. So the first picture that I want you to think of is maybe something that you watched on TV last week, the, uh, the Mars landing. Now, I'm not exactly a kind of space fanatic, but there is something about events like this that sort of draw us outside of ourselves. They remind us that the world the universe is a whole lot bigger than our own little corner of it. Maybe it reminds you of times past when you have witnessed such things. I want you to reflect, though, that God's love means that he provides for you. The whole Thing. I think we could even say that God has made the universe for us. That's a lot. That is far greater than anything we could probably even comprehend in our own minds. That's why I think I'm talking about things that are big and expansive when we talk about God's love and mercy or his power even. It's kind of hard to wrap your heads around because you can't even think that big of a thought, so to speak. So Jesus kind of takes the exact opposite approach in our text from St. Matthew chapter 6. Consider the lilies of the field, he says, or consider the birds of the air. The birds don't provide for themselves. You don't really see any bird farmers, bird grocers, bird truck drivers kind of tootling around, taking care of, making sure that all the birds have enough seeds. Doesn't work that way, does it? Not that I'm aware of. And yet, God provides for all of them. And in the same way, God provides for the lilies of the field. He makes sure that there is soil, that there is water, that there is sunshine. And every so often, he will even provide them with a garden to take care of them. So, Jesus uses these simple obvious, even mundane things of this world, and takes them and, and says, if God takes care of all of these things, the things that are here today and gone tomorrow, how much more will God take care of you? For the lilies were not made in God's image. Jesus did not come down to earth to become a bird. He became one of us. And so when we talk about God and we talk about God's provision for us, he takes on that flesh and blood and says, I will provide for you body and soul. And, of course, the greatest of that provision is he provides for our forgiveness and life through our Lord Jesus Christ. But it is not just the big thing that God provides. Maybe the cross can kind of help us as a bit of a lens to see the rest of our world. Or maybe, even better still, is to talk about the Lord's Supper. We'll get to that in a minute. So the problem, though, we can look at the birds.
birds of the birds and the lilies and such and see God's gracious care. But it doesn't take too much to say, well, I've seen a lot of birds on the side of the road. There's an awful lot of death in the world and hatred and let's just say gunk. How is it that God provides for the whole world and yet these things continue to happen? That's sort of the conflict that we all face between sometimes what we see and experience and what God tells us in his word. Sometimes those kind of go right past each other and it hurts. It hurts because I can't make sense of it. I've always liked that line from, now thank we all are God. Maybe you noticed it in the second stanza. And guide us when perplexed. It's not that often you get to sing about being perplexed. That's a very Lutheran hymn, I think. So God does not say, because I provide for you, that means you're going to understand everything that I'm doing. God doesn't say, now you're going to have the key to unlock all of the mysteries of the universe. Because guess what? You're still not God. But what he does say is, I love you. I give myself to you, and all of this is for your good and benefit. And maybe the most obvious, mundane, mysterious, physical way of getting that is in the Lord's Supper. Because there we have God provides, using his own creation, bread and wine, and through that actually brings to you eternal life. And I would like for you to kind of take that little picture, that image, and use that image to kind of superimpose over the rest of the world. Because now you can see that the food that you eat for breakfast, the house that is over you, the clothes that you wear, all of these things are there because of God's love. The greatest of that love is our Lord Jesus Christ giving himself to us. But God always has more gifts to give. And that's the wonder of the whole thing. Luther, in his explanation to the fourth petition, says that a part of what we do in praying, give us this day our daily bread, is that we pray that God would lead us to realize this. That is, realize that this is all from God. To realize this and receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. In other words, if I understand that God, who has given himself to me and his son, continues to provide for me in the whole world, that's a pretty big God, isn't it? That makes the Mars landing look it's still kind of amazing. But it's amazing in the picture of all of the wondrous gifts that God has given to me and you and his people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now the peace of God will pass all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith.